I've started to notice that the short journey from where I left to uh, the shed is is starting to have a bit of uh, a toll on my um, on my car um, wear and tear wise. Um, I'm pretty sure that the short journeys aren't doing it any good to begin with, um, and also the interior is getting really kicked around and dirty with my overalls and with throwing stuff in the back. So I thought what I'd do is buy a cheap runabout um, just to go back and to between home and here and uh, anywhere else around about the place that I might want to throw some stuff in the boot. And, um, and maybe that might save my um, save my car a bit. So I started having a look, um, thinking that for about 300 quid I could buy um, a little hatchback, maybe with uh, a decent amount of MOT, and um, that might be quite um, usable. Not so. Uh, it seems that uh, prices of old cars have gone through the roof, really, and uh, I couldn't find anything locally. Uh, I found one, a Polo, for. Uh, 400 but it was um, it looked like it was on its last legs and uh, and so I was kind of scratching my head a bit uh, wondering what to do um, obviously if I scoured eBay I can find cars here and there around the country but um, it kind of defeats the object if you have to spend um, you know 100, 150 quid or whatever on petrol getting there and back so uh, while I was still thinking about this as, as luck would have it uh, a mate at work um, said to me that he wanted to sell his car that his uh, two daughters have been learning to drive in. They've been standing for a while, having uh, the, uh, no, hadn't, hadn't failed the MOT, the MOT had expired on it, um, but he said that otherwise it was, um, it was generally quite a good car that he'd had from an elderly relative a few years ago and um, uh, it just needs uh, a couple of rear light units and the front brake pads in for the MOT he thought. So I offered him 150 quid for it which he um, gladly accepted. Um, and it had the benefit of being just down the road, so uh, no transport costs, and it's outside here. Um, so I've set myself a budget of about 300 quid. Um, I think I could probably get it back on the road uh, for that amount of money, including the purchase price. So far, I've spent 28 quid on Haynes Manual, that was a fiver, and rear light units, which were uh, 20, 23 quid, so 28 quid out of my uh, remaining 150. Uh, and hopefully just brake pads to get. Um, so let's go outside and have a look at the car. So here it is in all its glory. It's a um, 1997 P-Reg and uh, I think it's a 1.2, maybe it's 1.149 I, th I think. And uh, generally not in bad nick. It's got four good tyres, new exhaust Rear light units obviously smashed to bits there, and the other one got a crack in it, so uh, that'll be replaced. And uh, a few bumps and scrapes. Nothing too much to worry about there. I think my friend said that the uh, headlamps have been replaced recently. Certainly look quite shiny. And uh, it also had a new windscreen last year. If that got broken. So it's been parked here for a couple of days, so I'll see if it'll uh, when even open. I find that there's a bit of an issue with the immobiliser. <laughs> oh, that's it, opened it. Stick the key in. That's fired up. Brilliant. So, uh, interior is alright. No rips and tears. A bit dusty, but it's alright. Do the job. Uh, it's worth mentioning that the sunroof's leaking, and I believe that uh, that's quite a common thing on these Clios. And um, I strongly suspect that's the reason why the immobiliser doesn't work properly. Because, you can see why I've pulled this out. I don't know whether you can see that. I think probably not. Hold on a second. You can see the corrosion in the end of there. If that's focused. Um, that's where the water's running through the leaking uh, sunroof through this area into here and, uh, and damage that. Now this unit you can buy um, a direct plug-in replacement from Renault for about 70 quid. Um, 
but what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to seal the sunroof up and then I'm going to take to that with some switch cleaner and uh, a little wire brush and see if I can get it going um, see if I can get the corrosion on the back cleaned up and uh, if that does the trick I'm not going to worry um, but uh, at the moment the car still opens it's just a bit of a fiddle um, nothing too serious though um, mileage 71,000 it's not bad for a car of this age, is it? Brilliant. So, that's great. The first thing I'm going to do is have a look at the rear lights. Here's one of the two uh, second-hand lab assemblies that I bought. So, uh, plug there for what I'm guessing is a fog light. Take that out. And uh, there's a grommet in the back of there, uh, which I just need to ease away. Screwdriver. that piece of loom removed and then there's two spring clips to lift the lamp tray out put that to one side so I'm just going to give that a bit of a cleaning over with some uh, universal degreaser and then uh, wipe over with a bit of WD-40 and it should be good as new Okay then, uh, ready to go back in the car. Um, but as you can probably hear in the background, the weather's taking a turn for the worse, so I'm going to reverse the car into the shed and um, make a start taking the old light units out. The light unit unscrews with one thumb nut on the back. There it is. And there are two lugs at the bottom of the light unit, so tilt the top forward and lift it, and it comes away. And there's a wiring harness plug to disconnect. That's that out. And on the near side, the second wiring harness plug, that doesn't appear on the other side, that's the one that I suspect is the fog light. Um, and it's grommet that needs carefully pushing out at the bottom of the lamp holder. And that's the light unit out. I'm going to give that area behind there a clean out, brush out all the uh, dust and dirt, give it a wipe, and then I'm going to fit the new light unit into there. Okay, one side done and I'm going to move on and do the other. That's the new rear light units fitted and working and now I'm going to move on and have a look at the front brakes. There are two types of brake fitted to this uh, particular model of Clio. The one's made by Girling and one's made by Bendix and um, obviously the pads are different. So I'm just going to have a quick look, see which type it's got and then I can go ahead and order some new pads and if necessary some discs. So I've got the front wheel off and I can see that uh, this car is fitted with Bendix type uh, calipers and um, you can tell by, by the fact that it's got a tang on either end of the brake pad whereas the Girling type has got um, one big sort of tang in the centre there. Um, so that's good. Um, what's even better though is that these are brand new discs and those are brand new pads. So I'm not sure what my mate meant when he said that it was uh, going to be in need of brake pads. Maybe he did them and forgot about it. I'll have to check with him, but um, on the surface of it, it uh, looks like that saved me an expense. Just noticed something interesting. 
that's water running from the centre console above the rear view mirror and looking up into the hole I can see the water dripping there it's dripping down that cable I don't know whether it's clear on here try and get it in there but what we're looking at there is the cable that goes up to the aerial in fact there's the nut and bolt on the back of the aerial so even if that tape on the uh, sunroof is stopping it leaking there's still water coming in through the aerial hull so when I do the sunroof in fact maybe even before I do the sunroof seal I'm going to do something about stopping that water coming in because that's probably been running directly into the um, central locking sensor um, and immobiliser device well, that was a pretty successful day. Uh, rear light swapped over, that was a pretty easy job. And uh, front brakes, well, they don't need doing. Um, I've uh, of course also found a source of the water leak, um, even though the sunroof's still sealed up, there's still water coming in. Um, so I've got that to deal with, but that's not an MOT issue. Um, I'll deal with that in due course. Um, so I think the next thing I'm going to do is stick it in for the MOT, see if anything else comes up, and if it does, I'll address it then. So thanks for watching, hope that was interesting, um, if you enjoyed that please uh, please leave a comment and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot then, bye bye.